What's going on, you guys? Let's talk about the big one. The big movie everyone's been waiting all year to see. December 15th, the only movie worth seeing, Ferdinand. No. <laughs> no, let's not talk about Ferdinand, though I do feel really bad for Ferdinand, how it's going to make probably zero dollars coming out on Star Wars Day, but that's their own fault for releasing on Star Wars Day. No, let's talk about Star Wars. Spoiler-free review. Uh, as spoiler-free as I can keep it, you know, trying to be as vague as possible. But yeah, there shouldn't be anything major in this video. Really polarizing movie. Uh, this movie on Rotten Tomatoes, it has like a 50-something percent. It's split right down the middle for the audience score. Critic score is very high. I think it's in the 90s. Maybe not now, but it was in the 90s. And the, the audience score is very split. I've seen a lot of negative reactions to this movie in comment sections of reviews that I've watched. Yeah, or I didn't actually watch the reviews. I try to do my reviews before watching other people's reviews. But I clicked on them to go into the comment section to have a look. And, uh, yeah, very, very split. A lot of people love this movie, a lot of people hate it. Which side do I fall on? I love the movie. Uh, I, I really do. I think this is the kind of movie, it's, it's Star Wars, you know, it's the kind of thing where there's just gonna be unpleasable fans. And that's not me justifying the flaws this movie has, I have flaws with the movie, but I still loved it. Uh, Star Wars is just something that will have, like I said, unpleasable fans that just want it to be exactly like this, or exactly like the old movies, or... This isn't Star Wars enough, you know, by their arbitrary definition of what Star Wars should be, or yada yada. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that makes your criticisms totally invalid. It's a matter of opinion. Of course, your opinion could be total garbage. I'm someone who does firmly believe that is true. Some people have ridiculous opinions, but whatever. That's a controversial topic for another time. Uh, but yeah, if, you, if, if you, in your opinion the movie sucks and you have valid criticisms of the movie, that's fine. You can let me know in the comment section below. Yeah, let's talk about some of the negatives I had with the movie. First of all, I think the big one, the big one is Snoke. Uh, without giving too much away uh, about what he does in the movie and everything, obviously, Snoke just doesn't do enough in this movie, and at the same time, I feel like they're not going to do much with him, period. You know what I mean? Like, obviously they're going to do stuff with him, but it doesn't feel like they're very concerned about explaining who the hell this guy is. It just, it just doesn't feel like they care to explain who this guy is, where he came from, why he can use the dark side, where his scars and messed up face came from. They just don't seem concerned with explaining any of that. And I'm not going to lie, that's a pretty big fucking issue that I'm really shocked they just don't care to explain. I mean, I'm sure it's in a book or a comic or something like that in the new expanded universe, but you should never have to read a book to understand what's going on. Like, that's one of those things when people say, like, well, it was explained in the book, I... That's like, that's not a valid defense. It just isn't. You shouldn't have to read the book to understand what happens in a movie. So yeah, uh, it's it's pretty bad, that, that whole Snoke stuff going on in this movie. Like, he is cool for what he is, I guess. Like, he has some cool Force moments, but... Or Dark Side Force moments, whatever. Uh, but it's just like, who is he? And it just doesn't seem like they're concerned with explaining that. It, feel, it really feels like they just want to move forward with Kylo Ren's character development, which is really good, but we're still in negatives for now. The only other major negative I can think of, at least off the top of my head, there could be more that I could put in the comments or like in a follow-up spoiler video, but the only other one I can think of right off the top of my head is this Admiral chick of the Resistance. Basically what's going on is, in this, the plot of the movie, very simple plot, you have Rey training with Luke, and that's interlaced with the main thing going on, which is the Resistance running from the First Order. They're about to run out of fuel, and if they go into hyperspace, the First Order can still track them, so they have no way to run... What they need to do is have Finn, this new character we're introduced to, she's fine. That's really all I have to say about her. She's fine. And uh, BB-8, go on this journey to find a code breaker who can hack the First Order ship, turn off their tracking device, so they can go into hyperspace and get out of there. And uh, what ends up happening is we have this new person in charge. Leia puts someone else in charge temporarily, and Poe doesn't like her. She doesn't like Poe. They clash. She has a plan at the end of the day. But things go so far, again, without giving anything away, things go so far between her and Poe, and it escalates so much, and it's like, dude, just tell him the plan. It's a very simple plan. Why are you, oh, I know fly boys like you, shoot first, ask questions later, get out of my face, you're just a captain, you got demoted by Leia. It's like, tell him the plan so things don't escalate. Like, once things, once things are escalated, she still doesn't explain the plan. She fights back, and it's like, you really seem like a traitor right now, and it's just, it's weird. Uh... Very weird writing choice, uh, very stupid character decision to keep that a secret for so long. But yeah, she had a plan, and she does redeem her character in a really cool scene, 
but it's just kind of weird writing, kind of forced to make it so there's this tension, this extra tension when there's already so much tension because time is counting down. Finn and this new character, I forget her name, I really wish I didn't, uh, I, just, I don't want to call her Asian girl, because that sounds bad, but, uh, yeah, she, she and Finn go to this planet to try to find this code breaker, and they're in jail, and BB-8's there, and, uh, it, all this tension, all this cool stuff's happening, some lighthearted scenes, it's basically the most lighthearted part of the movie, because everything else is like, man, we're about to die, and the First Order's about to win, and we gotta hold on to hope, and, uh, yeah, there's a lot of tension, with this very tight time limit that they have. The stuff between Ray and Luke is really interesting. I love the characterization with Luke. I wish I could talk about all of it, but uh, that would be going to major spoilers. But Luke is pretty much what I thought he would be in this movie. A lot of people are really hating what they did to Luke in this movie. Even Mark Hamill, I think, said he hates what they did to Luke. Although I don't... I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Mark Hamill, but I mean, that's just one man's opinion. A lot of people are using that as like a, see, even Mark Hamill thinks that they totally destroyed Luke's character. And it's like, again, that's just one man's opinion. I liked Luke in this movie. After, you know, after what happened with uh, Kylo Ren and everything, and you, you hear in The Force Awakens that he went off to exile himself somewhere where no one can find him, you really think he's going to be the same Luke? You really think he's not going to be a broken man that doesn't want to train more Jedi because Kylo Ren screwed everything up, and you think he's not going to have a new perspective on the Jedi in general? You're crazy. Obviously Luke was going to be different, but there's still echoes of the original Luke in there, especially when he talks to someone. I'm not going to say who. Uh, you really feel Luke there. Like, Mark Hamill really killed it in this movie. He's funny, he's badass, he looks awesome. Uh, he, the training with Rey is cool. Rey is still a cool character. I have grown more, uh, annoyed by how overpowered she is. I mean, they try to compare her to Kylo Ren, like, oh, they're both really strong. They both have raw power. I think Rey is, uh, I think she edges him out quite a bit in stuff we actually see the two of them do. Like, Kylo Ren can definitely be cool, but... He seems way more novice than she does, considering how much of a novice she is. I'm not going to go as far as to say she's a Mary Sue, but yeah, her progress, speed, and stuff like that does get a little irksome. But, uh, natural talent, whatever. Again, I don't think she's quite a Mary Sue or anything like that. But, uh, and her scenes there have some lighthearted moments. They can be fun. Seeing Luke kind of live his life there is cool. There's a little bit of world building. Uh, yeah, it's... And they do some really cool stuff with the Force. Again, I don't want to spoil anything, but they take the Force... Like, you know when two characters can, like... Uh, feel each other's presence and talk just a little bit to each other. They go farther with that. Uh, it's really cool. Um, it's really cool stuff they do with the Force. They really... Some people might say they break it a little bit. I don't think they do, honestly. I think they just take everything to the next level without going, like, crazy, ridiculous Force Awakens bullshit where they're basically, like, using the Force like it's a Dragon Ball Z power and bringing down Star Destroyers. No, nothing like that. No, no stupid shit like that happens. Uh, you know, they just take the Force to the next level. And I think it's really cool. But, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for negatives. You know, Ray nitpick that she's a little bit annoying with her progress speed and how strong she is. Uh, the captain, or the, the admiral, or whatever, not really explaining her plan. I thought that was stupid writing. And, the, like I said, Snoke just really isn't fleshed out a lot in this movie, and it doesn't seem like they're going to flesh out his character. They're going to focus more on Kylo Ren. Not too sure. They might do more Snoke in the next movie, or not do more. Obviously, they will, but they uh, they might not go into him as much, and that's disappointing considering how big this character should be. But that's pretty much it uh, for negatives. The rest of the movie is filled with tension, filled with great action, filled with some solid humor, which is another thing people are complaining about. Like, the Star Wars movies never had humor. Like, Return of the Jedi, the Ewoks. Like, come on. Like... <laughs> And that's not even, like, Return of the, like, uh, Empire Strikes Back had jokes, you know, the first one. They all have a sense of humor. They Maybe they're not doing gags, per se, but, I mean, that, this movie's not really doing gags, either. It's just funny little moments. But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> people, I like, are people really trying to insinuate, like, are you really trying to say Star Wars should be totally serious? Because that's never been Star Wars. C-3PO, R2-D2, they're in all the movies. They have comedic relief. They have comedic relief in this movie. Uh, yeah, but... Whatever. That's other people's criticism. For me, the movie's great. I think the humor was balanced really well. The action scenes are fantastic. Some really cool lightsaber stuff in this movie. Even though we don't really get, like, that traditional final lightsaber battle in the movie, which was ballsy to not have in there. Really, the movie is filled with ballsy decisions. A lot of ballsy, unexpected things happen, which I really appreciate and really like. Uh, just taking... The way, the way they take Luke's character in and of itself is very ballsy, and what they do with him later is very ballsy. Uh, and, you know, Kylo Ren, 
and Rey and their relationship and the stuff they do with Kylo Ren. It's all really big decisions that shake up the status quo from The Force Awakens. And leading into Episode Nine, things are going to be a lot different. And I really like that and really appreciate that. And of course, there's Star Wars fan service moments that make you feel the nostalgia or just make you like you just feel like Star Wars. R2-D2 has a great nostalgic moment. Uh, it's just, it's cool, you know what I mean? Like, I could see someone being really cynical and saying, oh, they're just doing this for fan service, they're just pandering to nostalgia, that scene didn't need to be there. And for some, I can kind of agree. There's a scene where C-3PO tries to tell Poe the odds and Poe's telling him to shut up. And it's like, yeah, callback moment. Uh, there are moments like that in the movie, and if you're really cynical or you just think, like, obviously they made these movies to bank on nostalgia and you see nostalgia pandering in the movie and you consider that a negative, I'm not going to fault you for that, but I like those moments. I like seeing them. Uh, it, you know, they're really fun. There's a moment with Luke that uh, I was starting to tear up just because of what was happening, and I'm trying to be really vague about that, but it was... It was so cool. It was so cool. I want to talk about it so bad, but I can't. Uh, yeah, it was really fun. It was really fun, filled with tension, filled with drama, really cool action. Uh, it, it does echo Empire Strikes Back in places, obviously, with Rey training with Luke in the second movie, kind of like Luke training with Yoda. And then you have, you know, the rebels on the run, and at the end of the movie... You know, it's, it's all about escaping. It's not about dealing another massive blow to the First Order. So it does have echoes of... Uh, it does have echoes of Empire Strikes Back, but it's not Empire Strikes Back. It's It has echoes of it, it has homages to it, but it's very much its own movie. It's very much its own thing that takes Star Wars in a new direction with ballsy decisions and ballsy character choices that I really appreciated and didn't see coming. It's not like how The Force Awakens was just a new hope with new characters and some minor differences. Uh... Which I don't hate about the new. Uh, I don't hate that about the Force Awakens, but I can see some people having an issue with it. Uh, you definitely have a leg to stand on with that criticism. But for the Last Jedi, I absolutely loved it. I don't think the negatives of the movie, though they are kind of significant because they stand out so much around all the positives. Uh, I still don't think they're enough to detract from an 11 out of 10 score for Star Wars: The Last Jedi. You have to go see it. Whatever your opinion is coming out, whether you love it or you hate it. I think as a Star Wars fan, you should definitely see it. There's a lot to like here. And for those people who are saying it's like the worst Star Wars movie, come on, Phantom Menace. See, no, watch The Phantom Menace again. You can't tell me The Last Jedi is the worst Star Wars movie. That's that's an invalid opinion. I'm sorry. That's just stupid. I mean, if you... if you, I'm kind of joking. Like, if you really think it's the worst Star Wars movie in your opinion, fine. That's your opinion. Whatever. I can't change it or tell you you're stupid. But that's... It sounds pretty stupid to say... That, you know, it's the worst Star Wars movie when we have the entire prequel trilogy, except for maybe Revenge of the Sith, but especially Attack of the Clones, and especially Phantom Menace. Come on. That's my review for The Last Jedi. Uh, a few big negatives in an overall great, phenomenal movie that captures the feel of Star Wars. Ryan Johnson did a great job directing. It'd be cool if he directed 9. I don't know who's directing 9. Is it J.J.? Did they announce J.J. Abrams for 9? That's concerning, because I like Force Awakens, but... Please don't let Nine be Return of the Jedi or Empire or something like that. I hope J.J. gets his shit together and makes an, an original Star Wars movie. Uh, if he's doing Nine. I could be wrong. I feel like I heard he's doing Nine, but like I said, I could be wrong. But yeah, that's pretty much it. What did you guys think of Star Wars The Last Jedi? Have you seen it? Have you not seen it? If you're planning to see it and you haven't seen the other Star Wars movies, you gotta see the other Star Wars movies. There's moments that you just won't appreciate unless you've seen the original trilogy. So, definitely watch the original trilogy and Seven before you watch this one. But after you've done all that, tell me what you think of the movie in the comment section below. If you have seen it, like I said, tell me what you already think. Give this video a thumbs up and share it on social media. Both those would help me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you like what you've seen here, click that little bell to get notifications when our videos go up. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.